Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a Muslim life coach and I support Muslim women with relationship and mental health issues. So if you're interested in being coached in those areas, you can find me over on my website, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. But over here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as Dawah content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely make sure you subscribe. Before all of that, I'm actually a teacher. So if you're interested in online home tuition for children between the ages of 8 and 18, then definitely check out my website as well. Now, in today's video, we are talking about reasons to reject a man, reasons to tell that man, see ya, bye, you're not the one for me, it's not gonna work out. So I hope you find this video very, very beneficial, inshallah, and uh, let's begin, shall we? The first reason to reject a man is if he is definitely in the school of thoughts that a woman should pay 50% of um the financial burden or carry 50 percent of the financial burden and i will say this only applies to people who don't believe that it's their responsibility or women who don't believe that it's their responsibility to pay 50 percent if you're a 50 percent kind of woman and it's working in your marriage and it's working for you great continue okay because some for some people it actually works in their relationships and they're happy so no need to flip anything that's not broken right so if it's working for you, great. If it's not working for you, if you're like, no, it's not my burden to carry because in Islam, Allah says that, you know, it's the men's responsibility to upkeep the woman to provide for her. Then when a man starts giving you 50-50 vibes, it's a red flag. It's like, I don't think this is going to work out. Hear me out. I say that because 50-50 is actually very unfair to a woman because when the men say 50 50 they mean that they can go out to work work far more hours than you but they will only pay 50 percent of the household bills and you should also go and work and pay 50 percent of the household bills but at the same time you will carry the pregnancy <laughs> go through the difficulty of pregnancy work through that you will also look after the children you will also clean the home you will also be the one who's mainly in charge of cooking you will also be the one who's mainly in charge of doing the household shopping and all the other paying bills and all the other chores that come along you will do all of that and pay 50 percent of the household bills too do you see how this is not making sense it's not making sense sis. it's not making sense it's actually not 50-50. It's you doing so much whilst he only has to go to work and come back home and only pay 50% of the bills. Oh, I didn't add also fulfilling his rights in bed, you know, at the end of the day when you're absolutely exhausted. I know of a brother who actually told me like, it's best not to um, allow your wife to work too much because at the end of the day, you're not going to get that excuse of she's tired all the time if she's not working herself completely out. And I agree with him. Sometimes men have this thing where women are so annoying, wives are so annoying. Every time you approach them, she's always tired. There's always oh, something's wrong with me. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, here hurts. Apparently, women are making excuses because they don't want to be physically intimate with their husbands. Now, do women sometimes use those excuses? Yes. But sometimes, is it actually really true that they are absolutely shattered and absolutely exhausted? Yes, because you go to work, she also goes to work. She's got to come back home early. She's got to go pick up the children. She has to give the children their bath at night. Then she has to make dinner. Then she has to clean the house. Then she's got to prepare their school uniform for the following day. Everything. And then at the end of the day, the second she hits the bed, husband's like, oh, she's like, don't you even dare she's like don't you even dare touch me because i'm shattered right now if you lift a finger it will just flop right back down again because i'm so tired please do not touch me and that's why women are so tired out and that's why this whole 50 50 thing is a joke so for me i would say if you're not a part of that 50 50 gang if a man comes to you and he's like yeah but you know i expect my wife to contribute 50 percent 
you might have to ask him if he's willing to change his view on that or just simply let him know that you're not a woman who's willing to pay 50%. Now, should you contribute? This part is very important. Because I say this, but I actually still believe that woman should contribute. If she's earning and her husband compromises enough and he helps, he allows her to work. If he helps her look after the children, if he also helps with the house chores, if sometimes he also goes to the market and buys stuff and he enables you or makes it easy for you to work, then I think you should contribute some part of your income for the benefit of your family, but as a charity. Not because you have to, and nobody making you, it's not your responsibility, but just as an act of charity to make life also easier for your husband. Because sometimes I think some of us women are a little bit delusional about what it's going to be able to take to maintain the kind of lifestyles that some of us are living. Okay, the honest truth is things are expensive these days and it's very hard for a man who's an average earner to be able to maintain the home all by himself and maintain the kind of lifestyle that we want to live. So what I will have to say to some of us women who like nice things is that, you know what, sometimes you're going to have to pay for the nice things yourself. You know what I mean? Like if you want a new sofa and your husband can only afford a thousand pounds for a new sofa, but you want that two thousand pound sofa, well, maybe you should add the extra thousand pounds because you're the one that wants the nicest stuff. And this is the part women don't want to hear. I think women still expect men should just provide them the luxuries of life. And it's like, that's not how life works. Things are extremely expensive these days. So if you want the extra nicest stuff, you should be able to reach in your pocket. But remember, it's a charity and you don't have to. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. He gives you a thousand pounds, go and buy a thousand pounds sofa. It's, 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 that's it. Just go and buy that thousand, forget a thousand pounds sofa. Go to Ikea and pick up the cheap chair from Ikea. Okay, that's it, seriously. But seriously, if he insists on this 50-50 lifestyle, hmm, take your time, okay? Take your time, woman, before you enter into this because huh, you're going to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I think my West Africans have understood everything I've said when I just did this, okay? You are going to sweat in that marriage, just, just know. Second reason why a woman should reject a man is if he is abusive, physically, mentally torturing you. And when it comes to the physical to torture, I would say, even if he just does it once, I think it's a wrap. I think it's a wrap. I think if a man physically abuses you one time, it's a wrap. Because if he was brave enough, if, if he didn't have enough control and he could actually do it one time, he would do it multiple more times. So it's your sign to check out. Literally check out. When a man physically abuses you one time, it's time to go. Like I... I I don't know about you guys, but me, I have zero, zero tolerance on that kind of rubbish. Zero tolerance. Not having it. Sisters, please take this seriously. Because some sisters think, oh, subhanAllah. There was someone who left me a comment about, oh, um, maybe that's why sisters should be um, very um, patient the way Asiya was. And I was like, Let, we're not playing that game, not on this channel. I deleted that comment for a certain reason. I don't want women seeing that and thinking that it's a good idea to remain in toxic relationships and that's what being patient is about. That's what's going to grant you Jannah because you got to let your husband abuse you. Like, no, that's not what's going to give you Jannah to let your husband abuse you. Do not get yourself into these situations in the first place. And so it's easier sometimes to warn people who are not in those type of situations rather than trying to help people out. And that's why a lot of my videos are for sisters who haven't yet married, because it's easier to make a better choice in the beginning rather than to get into it and start, you know, scratching your head for what do I do now? The third reason to reject a man is if he is showing signs that he will always support his parents, irregardless of what you think or what you say or what you experience. If a man is already showing signs that no matter what, I will always side with my parents, Hmm. that marriage is about to be a roller coaster because you will never feel valued in that in that marriage you will never feel respected you will never feel like your husband ever stands up for you and that sounds like such a small thing but when you're in it it really becomes a big issue because when he always sides with these parents especially especially the mothers because somehow 
every child is attached to, the, to their mother. But us women, we also have a very manipulative way of doing things. And so if a mom tells her son to divorce a woman and he's the kind of man who listens to his mother, initially he might not just jog, come home the next day and divorce you. But let me tell you, this thing is entering into his head. One day there's going to be a small little argument and he's going to flip and you're going to get divorced. And it's all coming from the rhetoric that the mum was putting into his head. Soon enough, when the mother doesn't like you because you did one thing or you didn't do another, she's going to start saying to him, she's not a good wife. I think you need to take a second wife. If you take a second wife, she's going to behave herself. You need to get a second wife. You need to leave that woman. She's no good. Every day, you're a bad person. You're a bad woman. You're a bad wife. You're a bad mother. You don't keep the up with the home, blah, blah, blah. All these mother-in-laws that like to judge daughter-in-laws for how dirty their home is. But it's like, mother-in-law, your house is more dirty. <laughs> your house is more dirty than the, your daughter-in-law. Tell the truth, eh? We are seeing you all. Please stop that. Stop that, okay? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Guys. I'm just, I don't know what's going into my head. I'm in one of those moods today. I just want to laugh. But seriously, when a man shows signs that he will always take side with his parents, whether they are right or wrong, it's a red flag. You need to let that guy go, okay? You really do need to let that guy go unless he is willing to change, okay? Everything I'm saying here is open to if he's willing to change, if he's willing to make amends, if he's somebody that reasons well, okay, fine, you know? Sometimes we all have misconceptions about certain things, but then when we reason correctly, we make the correct decision, then that's okay. But if this person insists that whether you are right or wrong, I will stand by mama, don't, don't start that relationship in the first place. That's my advice for you. The next reason to reject a man is if he asks you to change something about yourself that you don't want to change in order for him to marry you. I've touched upon this topic before in a previous video. I will leave that video linked in the description box down below. But I have to mention this again because it can be such a red flag that a lot of women don't realize it's a red flag. Why? If a man can't accept you for who you are. Now, of course, you're always going to be changing and there's always something about you that needs improvement. But when a man starts automatically, categorically saying to you, I need you to change this, I need you to change that, I need you to change this, to the point where it feels uncomfortable for you and you still go along with it because you know, oh, it's okay, I should be able to, I should be able to adopt a few things to make my husband happy, to make my man happy. That's the mentality that most of us carry initially. And then later on, we're thinking, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? I, I don't even recognize who I'm looking at anymore. Who is this woman in the mirror? I've changed so much of who I am just to fit the woman that you want me to be and I'm still not good enough for you. And I'm saying reject this man because you may be dealing here with a very insecure person, a person who likes to control others, like overly control others. Somehow people think this idea of being overly controlling is meant to be a good thing no it's not a good thing your wife the woman you're going to marry is not your child they're not your child and even your child mufti Meng said a very smart thing in one of the lectures i was listening to that when you birth a child allah gives you almost all of the right you make all the decisions you make you make the decisions about what they eat you make the decisions about what they wear when they take their bath when you're going to put them to bed you have almost all of the right to make the decisions you are so controlling over their lives but the older they get the less control you have over that person's life until you get to the point where that child is now an adult or even not even an adult, three years old, four years old, you're like, oh, take this, it's so yummy. They keep their mouth shut. My daughter's five months. When I try to give her certain vegetables she don't like, she use her tongue, she push it out. Like, I don't want this. Don't give it to me, mommy. And that is teaching all of us that you can't control someone's life fully. And so when you have a fully grown man, fully grown man that has grown to the point where he's now ready to get married, but he still somehow in his head thinks he's going to... He's going to fashion out somebody that's going to fit what he likes. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if your husband likes you wearing certain kind of clothes that's alluring to him. Those are not the kind of things that I'm saying. But I'm talking about big stuff. You know, when a man is telling you you're too fat, like you need to drop like 50Ks. I'm not even attractive to you anymore because you're too fat. But you were always a big woman when he met you. Like, 
bruh, <laughs> you know, you married a big woman and you're complaining that she's too big. What did you expect? So please, okay, be careful how much you're willing to compromise. Because if you over compromise, you won't know that what you're actually signing yourself up for is to be married to a controlling man. And what you change will never be good enough for him. You will change one thing, he wants you to change another. Then he wants you to change another. Then all your life, you're just, you're going to just become somebody you don't know. You're going to look yourself in the mirror and be like, who am I? Who did I become because of this man? And despite everything I've changed, I'm still not good enough. Because that's human nature. That's why you should be very, very careful about a man that tells you he needs you to change big, large things about yourself for you to become good enough for him to marry. If he's like that, hmm, gets to a point when you have to say, this one is not for me. The next reason to reject a guy is if that guy is unreasonably disrespectful to your family. Any man that is mentally sane from a respectful family background, a man who is family oriented, a man who also values and respects his parents, it's unlikely that that person is going to come and disrespect your parents for no reason either. And so if a man is showing from a very early stage of your talking phase, let's call it, and he's already showing disrespect to your family, you need to think twice before you marry that man. Because what's going to happen is when he marries you, if he marries you, if you agree, and anything happens in your relationship, your family members will not be able to stand up for you in any kind of way because he will not allow it. He will abuse them. He will insult them. He will make them irrelevant in your life. And then you'll be asking yourself, how did I get here? You chose a man who was already showing signs of disrespecting your family and you put up with it. That's how you ended up here. And when a man that you're going to marry has the audacity, the courage to actually disrespect your mother, your father, people who are old enough to be his parents probably, and he already has that much bravery to do that, you should be asking what he'll be willing to do to you. Like some men are abusive, but at least they know how far to take it. When it comes to like parents level, they're like, nah. And so if a man is brave enough to be disrespectful, calling your parents names, just tell that man goodbye, please. Save yourself the stress and hassle later, okay? The final reason to reject a man is if this man is about earning haram income. It sounds like a small issue, but it's really not. Do not allow a man who is going to feed you through haram sustenance to marry you. Like as a practicing woman in Islam who wants to live a halal life, you need to make sure what you're ingesting is pure. And when your husband goes out and he earns money through haram ways, he brings that money home to you. And you're also eating from that money, sustaining from that money. That's not the type of a man that you want to share a life with. Because that's how you end up raising children who are also crooks. They're going to grow up, your kids are going to grow up to be crooks. Because they're like, yeah, you know, that thing is haram, but dad sells it. And that's how we make most of our money. And I know nowadays it's all about the shiny stuff. It's all about the man who's earning six figures. You know, he can take me out on posh dates and, and spoil me with all this, you know, Louis Vuitton and Chanel and uh, what's the other ones that's out there, YSL and all this expensive stuff. It seems alluring. Driving a nice car around the place, shopping at luxurious. I know. It's very attractive. But if that money is haram, sis, you don't want nothing to do with it. Because on the day of judgment, what are you going to say to Allah? What are you going to say to Allah? That concludes this video. And those are the reasons why you should reject a man. There's more. So I may do more of these videos in the future if you guys like it. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with any other sister out there whom you feel will benefit from today's content. <laughs> and definitely leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Letting me know what you think of this video. <laughs> if there are parts that you want to add or share your views, definitely. We can continue the conversation in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for all of your love and your support. You guys are cheering me on. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be consistent and you guys are super supportive. And 
and I love it. I love your support. Thank you so much, guys. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. By the way, guys, have you seen this video over here? If you haven't, definitely check it out and I will see you over there. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.